being here for joining this conversation. It's awesome to have you here. And um, I have so many questions for asking to you. And okay. but it, it would be great if you could maybe start uh, talking a, a bit about you and a bit about your experience with uh, conducted improvisation, with free improvisation, whatever you want to share. <laughs> okay, uh, well, I'm Caroline Crabble. Hello. <laughs> um, I live in London. I play the saxophone. Um, I've been an improviser for almost ever since I started playing. Um, yeah, even and I came from a place of ignorance about music, really. I was, I grew up in a silent household where music was, was not really um, listened to. So, and I started playing when I was in my late teens. So it was all completely new. And that meant that, you know, some things that other musicians think are really normal, I found really strange. And some things that I thought were really normal maybe other musicians were a bit puzzled by. Hmm. Um, yeah, and so for what, 22 years, I've been playing with the London Improvisers Orchestra, which we could probably talk about later on, but um, yeah. it is what it says. It's it, We're based in London, we're improvisers, and it's called an orchestra because there's a lot of us, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, there's interesting interesting things that come up when there's a lot of people improvising together and i think that's something that's really worth exploring yeah Thank sure you. yeah that's sure and you went yeah. dark there okay I, am i dark no you're 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 back okay i think it's, it's my laptop is set to it doesn't matter go ahead okay <laughs> cool so um it's great to hear that you you have this uh different experience with music and I wonder how this how this influenced your you know your career how this uh, because <laughs> I'm, I'm I I share with you this uh, the same feeling I'm I'm uh, I'm a former architect and I I I went to music without knowing anything about music and then I definitely uh, I share the same the same I have mm. different pr perspectives and I wonder if you can. If talk a, a bit about your perspective, how how do you see things? Yeah, <laughs> it's hard to talk about one's perspective because it's it's something that one takes for granted. Sure. You know, um, I think as I've got older, mm -hmm. I've become a bit more confident about it. That's all I can really say. It's worth um, it's worth following your ideas and your, you know, if, if something tells you to try this, if you have a, 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 a yearning or a, a, something pushes you to try something, you should do it. Even if other people just think you're strange or, you know, think it's a bad idea, you, it, you lose more by not trying it than you would by trying it, you know, that's, yeah. Well, I found out, but it's been a long sort of, <laughs> I don't think I, you talked about my career uh -huh. and I think what career, you know, I just, <laughs> just working. I feel sometimes quite isolated. I think also as a result of this, hmm. you know, this uh, unusual background, but it doesn't really, one has to be who one is, you know, that as an improviser, I think that's really important to, yeah. even if you're lying, you're lying as yourself, you know, you have to be yourself. You can't be somebody else. Okay. <laughs> Do you yeah. Know I, yeah, I totally agree. And uh, I, if I can say something, I would say that uh, even if, if you find isolated, uh, I think, I think that's, uh, that's just make you more unique. And, and yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what I'm yeah. oh, sorry. No, carry on, carry on. No, I just, I just want to ask, uh, so how, how did you get into the conducted improvisation as a conductor? How did you get into that? Uh, 
It started before the LIO. So I was playing with smaller groups, quartets, five pieces. I can't remember exactly what, which groups came first and so on, but mm -hmm. so playing with smaller groups and at that point combining composition with improvisation. And I think so many improvisers go through a similar path, you know, where especially like maybe when I was in my twenties, I was perhaps did, wasn't confident to just improvise. Do you know what I mean? And I felt that it was good to have certain anchoring mm -hmm. points that you could return to, or you could suddenly bring something in or bring, bring, have some kind of structure, I guess you, one feels that at the time now, I think that the structure is the improvisation, okay. you know, it, it was a, a process that you, one goes through where you start with something a bit more structured, where you have things like maybe different members of the group can can bring things in while the music is going on or can tell someone else to stop or do you know what I mean? There's yeah. little cues or musical cues or or gestural cues. And so that was the how it started. And then I was became a member of the LIO just a few months after it began, maybe certainly before Christmas that year. Okay. <laughs> and um, the whole thing about it for me was to have a chance to, not only to play, but and to be conducted because you learn so much from that, yeah. but also to, to conduct and just try things. Every month we play, you know, mm -hmm. so every month we have a chance to try something new. It's, it's an amazing learning opp opportunity and, and performing opportunity. You know? Definitely. You've, definitely. Been, you've done it, you know? Yeah, uh, sure. I, I'm so grateful for having this opportunity to be with the London improvisers. Once it was uh, so uh, uh, opening for me, it was very, very great. I, I'm very thankful for that. And I, I wonder if you have uh, any considerations on your learnings uh, uh, through these years. Uh, you know, what you saying that you, you learned so much with that. And would you, would you consider saying a word about that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to cast oneself back, you know, but I remember one thing that really made an impact on me was uh, there were maybe five of us who formed a sort of a committee because just, you know, for practical decisions mostly, but also to talk about musical possibilities just a little bit. So there was Evan Parker, Pat Thomas, Steve Beresford, Ian Smith, and myself. And we would meet very occasionally because the thing about the LIO is it's very relaxed. It's not like an organization, you know what I mean? But one thing that Evan said quite early on became more and more important for me was, which was, I think it's mentioned on the sleeve notes of our CD that the real, um, for him, for the people, you know, who were in the Butch Morris group mm -hmm. and found that problematic for them, the real thing about forming a, an or improvising orchestra was the improvising. So the, the conducting was just, as it were, a tool to make the improvising more rewarding, both for the players and for the audience. It was to open up improvisation. So I think Of course, we've had different conductors who've done quite strict things. I've done quite strict things. But more and more, it's been going in the direction, or it was always going in the direction of becoming more as a group, more considerate, more creative, more uh, braver improvisers, you know, doing 
if there's maybe 30 people, 40 people, that's, it's a real challenge, you know, just in terms of hearing, first of all. Totally. But also, obviously, in terms of playing, you know. Yes, totally, <laughs> totally. I totally agree. And it's, it's a great thought. And uh, this definitely leads me to my first question that I, I've prepared, which <laughs> is, uh, um, I've been asking this to s everyone who participated in this chat. And again, it's about your perspective, but um, how do you see the role of the conductor in a situation like that? Uh, from my perspective, as a player, or as a conductor as well well there's different things yeah, so there's okay. being being a player and being conducted mm -hmm. and then there's conducting so today now i don't conduct sound okay i don't say play a sustained this is the cue for play a sustained sound or play an unvoiced sound I'm conducting what's going on up here okay. to try and open out, you know, things that have worked for me, basically, to open out improvising, to make people even more sensitive listeners, but also more courageous in terms of daring to play something or letting something go from themselves. So, for example, uh, there's a, my, I have, a cue that goes like this, which means listen to somebody and then do the opposite okay. of what they're doing. So it's a, it's not about a specific right or wrong way of doing the opposite and it, or a specific way of playing. It's just making you think about improvising, in fact. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And maybe it, hopefully, you know, you can't use it too much because then it just becomes another routine but while it's fresh it helps you know people discover things about improvising by this kind of thinking about what they're doing yeah that's <laughs> super interesting i i love thank you thank you for sharing that and uh, one thing that i find it's great is that uh, uh during this uh, series of interviews I've talked to uh, so many people and they have different approaches for what was, what was conducting and what is mm -hmm. the role of conducting. And some people said uh, that they, they use it as a language and some other people said they use it as a free form conduct conducting, like without a meaning, just gestures. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's great to see that uh, we have different perspectives of this kind of practice it, this is super super interesting yeah yeah and i have something here that um actually i i i keep with great care and this is uh, what i get when uh when i went oh to yeah London. okay <laughs> <laughs> so here is here is written um uh, notes from notes by caroline cradle <laughs> yeah yeah i see it <laughs> and um I keep this with great care and uh, I love I love the way you put you know your your ideas and I, I know there are some other people ideas here and uh, do you yeah, have Yeah that's the whole the whole ensemble of LIO or more or less okay. LIO cues that have built up over 22 years you know Is this the only the only record do you have on gestures Though no, there's a whole series of generations of that document with okay. different, you know, okay. it, we keep adding things to it basically, but there's always something new, even, even, you know, every month as someone comes up with a new uh -huh. idea. So we, you know, or, you know, you were talking about uh, the gestural, we have um, some lovely conductors. I'm thinking of Philip Vaxman, mm -hmm. you know, him who's, he's such an extraordinary musician and he, he does say, you know, if I do this, this is what it means. But then when he performs a conduction, mm -hmm. it's more just about, it's like as a player, you have a direct 
like a, a vessel, a blood vessel going from his heart to your heart. You know, you feel, you watch, you become really absorbed because it's very, he's, he's very serious, you know, and, and yet it's sort of, it's just very fluid and, and gestural and surprising because whatever he tells you he's going to do, he'll, he'll do that, but he'll also do something completely differently or unexpectedly. And it's, it's so stimulating, in fact, because it can't be described, okay. you know, it's beautiful and it makes really beautiful music. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> and, um, well, still, still talking about uh, gestures and metaphors, uh, you use the word routine and, uh, this caught my attention because, um, many people say they have a, a strategy or a routine for doing, and you, you already said that you prefer to 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 deal with people with their this uh, mind thing uh, without mm. without a routine but do you have any strategy or you know preferable gestures or something that you like to use uh, i mean anything that you um, could say about your your style of conducting i think the way i've got to use conducting is very much influenced by the sort of group that the LIO has been over these 22 years. And now perhaps it's, it's a bit less like that, but for, for a long time, it was a group that had a lot of virtuosi in it mm -hmm. and old, who were older than I. Now I'm one of the older people in the group, but obviously 22 years ago, that was different. Um, and How could I say it? Well, there, there was a, a tendency to think of the performance, the as a, as the group and the improvisation as a chance to play. You know what I'm saying? And so this, the, there was a lot of, of sound and very often it was frustrating for the people who play quieter instruments. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was brilliant as well, but you know, it was, if it became consistently like that, then I felt like we were failing as a group to, you know, to play together, the strings, the, the horns, the percussion, whatever, the, vo the voices when we had voices. And so that influenced trying to think about things that could be suggested as providing, um, you know, and something to think about when you're improvising that might help balance out the dynamic okay. situation in the group. So it started out with a lot of ideas about listening, mm -hmm. which is nothing new, you know, I mean, John Stevens was doing that in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And, you know, probably before people were doing that, but ideas about listening to each other making sure you can hear everyone scanning the the group with your ears and i think if i've worked with other improvising orchestras where the dynamic the, or the not literally well the literal dynamics but also the interpersonal dynamic was so different that that wasn't really necessary okay Do you know what i mean so yeah. it was like the group was conducting me conducting them you know i'm saying that it was like oh what do we need here okay maybe we need to let the quiet instruments be heard a bit more mm -hmm. okay and that's so i think that was where it started with the sort of thinking about the sounds around you and 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 how to make an intervention that would be at the same time you know personal and and beautiful but not not necessarily drowning somebody else out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. I 100% agree. And um, I, um, it could be a tricky question, but uh, I wonder if you can, if if you can develop a little bit. How was your experience conducting different groups of uh, of improvisers? Oh God. 
I think the other groups I've conducted, of which there must be maybe five or six orchestras, you know, improvising orchestras, none of them was as big as the LIO. Okay. And generally they had younger members, mm. you know, the musicians tended, because the LIO, we ranged from sort of teenagers to people in their 80s, possibly even their 90s which is one of the brilliant things about the group over the years. It changes every every month, of course. But OK, so these other groups were sort of more uniform, I guess. And they were maximum 20 people rather than 40 people. OK. And okay. very often, not always, they, sent, they tended to fall into like the people were either came from a classical background or from a sort of rock background, she said, playing an imaginary guitar. <laughs> <laughs> And so, you know, the ones from a classical background, obviously there's a discipline there. It's a different, in that situation, I think you're more required to sort of say, no, just let it go. Let yourself mm -hmm. make a noise without thinking, is it the right noise? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a completely different circumstance. Whereas the people in the LIO, some of them, were from, you know, very early generations of improvised music in the UK. And so brilliant improvisers and didn't, you know, there was, they didn't need anything to say improvise because they already improvised so brilliantly, you know, and I learned, I mean, I learned Lowell Coxhill mm -hmm. was always uh, sitting next to me, you know, uh -huh. and I learned so much from, from hearing him every month and from how he is, how he was as a person. So mm -hmm. That's awesome. it was a different situation. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> and um, uh, this de definitely leads me to another uh, tricky question, which is um, because you say you, you said that it was, uh, th there was some brilliant uh, improv improvisations. I wonder if, if I can say or or not, that is that a good or bad improvisation, and what what does it it be good <laughs> or bad? You know, <laughs> yeah, it, I know it's tricky, but I mean, as a conductor, I I I wonder if you don't face you know this challenge when when you are when you are in front of an orchestra and you feel that this is going bad. So how how can you you know, or not. I mean, some people said that nothing can go bad, and some people said that uh, there there are some some things that could go wrong. So, what what do you think on that? I think okay. Again, what Evan said also was that the point of doing conducted pieces in the LIO was to learn to play the free pieces better. Okay, and he. So what he meant, I think, or what I understood by better and what I feel is better is nothing to do really with um, the content of the music mm -hmm. as such, but it's to do specifically with that experience of generosity and listening. So generosity both in what you give and then what you refrain from giving, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But just an, an absolute presence and, and courage to, to improvise, you know, it's, yeah, improvisation is, is like, it's, it's, there is definitely a good and a bad improvisation, but maybe different people would say the, the same improvisation was good or bad, do you know what I mean? It's, and when you're actually playing it, and also when you're listening to it in a live situation, it's like a very condensed and, um, you know, your perception becomes very sharp and you be, you're listening to trying to hear everyone. Even when you're playing with the orchestra, it's very difficult to hear everything, but it's like your sense of alertness is awakened you know and and also if you're in the audience and it's just like living that 45 minutes or whatever incredibly intensely mm -hmm. 
Do you know what I mean? So you can't say, all right, it could be intense, like being beaten up. That would be horrible. You know, if like, if, if it just seemed like a sort of indifferent, nasty thing, uh -huh. but apart from that, the intensity and, and then the concentration and the sort of roller coaster ride of it, that, that, you know, that is what makes it a good improvisation. You can't say because person X played this phrase at this point, that was good. It doesn't work like that. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, totally. it's like living, but intensified. Totally, totally. And uh, that's an outstanding uh, way of vi viewing things. It's great. Generosity <laughs> is definitely, you know, gratitude and generosity. That's definitely the words for doing um uh, doing this and uh also this leads to me um one thing that i i i talked to steve when when we we talked about that and uh i was asking him and i would like to ask you as well uh if you think if you think that uh conducted improvisation or even just free improvisation is it a social practice something that can improve improve the relationship between people even they are not musicians at all or even they're just you know people who are going through this and that that's what i think but i would like to s to know what you think well i think what we said just now it, about it being like living uh -huh. of, so this is something that i really owe to maggie nichols maggie nichols was one of my first teachers and we've been playing together since the 80s and you know she's for me she's just the most extraordinary creative improviser and thinker about improvisation and she was always saying life is an improvisation you know and the more you can you can learn and prepare for that improvisation and so whether you and what you learn and and prepare to learn to improvise mm -hmm. as a musician will also definitely relate to how you react to the unexpected in life. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I can't think of any examples except that that's just you become you listen more, okay. you become okay. more aware of the dynamics around you because that's what an improviser is doing. If you, if they are playing with people, you know they're you've got to be aware of every shift of mood, you know, whether that's positive or negative. And so in life and in politics, you can, you can certainly apply all the things you learn from improvising. I, I think it's a really useful practice. Totally. Yeah. A hundred percent agree. Yeah. Maggie Nichols is awesome. She's great. Yeah. And um, thank you for sharing this. <laughs> um, um, Maybe you could, I don't know, I would like to hear more about your experience as a conductor, you know, as what thing you, I don't know, anything you want to you wanna share about you being a conductor and what kind of experience did you have if you, I don't know, whatever you want to share. Hmm. Well, I remember when I first joined the LIO, you know, I was relatively younger. I was a woman and there were only, you know, I remember our, one of our early CDs had 45 musicians on it and only two of us were women, mm -hmm. or possibly three. And I came, I didn't come from the sort of background, musical background that most of the people came from. So I felt quite, you know, um a bit like i was on the spot you know as being mm -hmm. being examined and so you know okay. being tested i guess and i reckon i probably failed the test in a way <laughs> but so when i was conducting I, th there was often a feeling of resistance oh. you know mm -hmm. and i think that's a, that's productive actually because it means you're asking people they're asking you to do something 
or they're making what you're doing more of a challenge, you know, so that you have to overcome that challenge and, and vice versa. So I rem yes, for example, conducting and saying to people they had to play um, so quietly that they could uh, hear the sound of their heartbeat in their instrument because I know I'm a wind instrument player. Oh, wow. And so I've experienced that where if you blow very, very gently, eventually your pulse begins to influence your breathing. So that was, you know, that was like, ah, oh, stupid, you know, but people were ready to go for it and try it anyway. And, and it, I thought it brought about, you know, I felt like it was a step forward for me and maybe for some of the players as well, because of if you take it seriously mm -hmm. and try and do something, then it's, you, you know, you, you're bound to, to learn something new. So that was like 20 years ago that I'm talking about now. Uh -huh. That's a great and now, story. Yeah. Please go on, go on. Well, now it's different because I'm, you know, like some people have left. Sadly, some, some of our most beloved members have died. Yeah, sorry for that. And so, I've, you know, and I've, I've gained in confidence after these years as well. And so it's, it's more like, well, now it is the difficult thing is having the ideas. So back then I had loads of ideas, but I was timid about, about asking people to come with me on this journey, because quite often people were mm -hmm. found the ideas a little bit like either pointless or, you know, they resisted. And now, rather than that, they're ready to try the ideas, and I'm I'm thinking, oh, what ideas, you know? So, <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, but wow. yeah, it's a sort of it's all a, a progress. I'm still like this. I'm still working on things about either choosing to listen or choosing not to listen. Hmm. Now, okay. so we can talk about that later if you want to. Yeah, sure. Yeah, please. Uh, I, I would love to hear anything you have to say just just to reinforce what you are saying I know that uh, Walter Thompson he has uh, this gesture that is with blinders and it means that you you stop you stop interacting with anyone you just interact with yourself and mm -hmm. maybe it's uh, it's related to something that you are you are talking right now Okay, well, I, I have a lot of gestures that are about how much you listen, because I think being alive and improvising in life or in music is hugely to do with listening. So for many years, I tried to do pieces like this very quiet thing that would encourage people to listen. And pieces from John Stevens, you know, like the idea of scanning the group and making sure you can hear everyone. Mm -hmm. John Stevens was another one of my teachers back then. So that he was incredibly good at, you know, these sorts of ideas. But um, more recently, I started thinking about not listening okay. and how, you know, that's, that is the complement to listening. And, but there's so many different ways of not listening. So the one you describe of um, listening only to yourself. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's one way. So I can't remember what my cue is for that. Hang on. Oh, it's this, okay. right, pointing at yourself. Okay. Or you have listening only to someone else. So the cue for that, I can't do it in my camera, but it would be to point uh -huh. at someone else and cover the ear so you're not listening to yourself you're only listening to that other person but you're still playing do you know what i mean hmm. or you have okay and then you have not listening at all but there's different ways of not listening as well hmm. <laughs> okay? okay so yeah. go on please so if you like there's there's probably an infinite number of ways both of listening and of not listening but if i when i was trying the ideas, I found that 
okay, a few different ways of not listening. So one is to do something very difficult. Okay. Do you know? Harder so when you play, you can, or you you mean something that you can do it, but it's difficult, or something that it's hard. No, something that really is so hard that you have to focus. It's not about whether you can do it or not, really. It's just something that is so difficult. It demands more focus so that you can't really spare the brain power to use your ears. Okay. So it's your, so it's not something that's hard for your ears. It's something that's either hard for your mind or hard for your, your body. Okay. And so like when often when you practice, you're trying things and, and you can't get them right. And you keep trying them and, uh, and you get, you forget what you sound like. You just, you forget what you're doing because you're just trying to get something right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's, and so the cue for that looks like this, because it's like gears. Okay. Getting stuck. So that's not listening because you're doing something very difficult. Right. Uh -huh. And then if you look on the other side of that, sometimes when you're playing, you just, become so absorbed or so you do something that's so easy in fact but and also so pleasant mm -hmm. you know that you just you're not listening because it just feels so nice it just like it just comes out by itself do you know what i mean yes, yes. I, I, my light isn't very good here no, can you see me all right yeah, okay it doesn't yes perfect the sun is starting to shine shine in this window <laughs> So there's, there's that thing of like, you're sort of in a trance because you're just, ah, it's just coming out. You don't have to worry about it. You can think about something else or think about nothing. You're just like, ah. and so the cue for that is this, okay. because it's a kind of a, a trance and inwardness, you know? Okay. So those are just the, the two that, and then there's not listening at all. There's a couple of other ones, but that's the idea that you, you think about how you're listening. This is super interesting. This is one of the most interesting things I've heard until now. Because Thank you. <laughs> you know what? Um, I've been researching about this subject uh, for a long time. And uh, most of people, they, uh, uh, they, separate, uh, the, they separate what they do between uh, structure and content. Most people, mm -hmm. and you are talking about conducting feelings, and this is right, something. Exactly. This is another level. This is something that it's not content, and it's also not structure. This is something that. No, that's what I mean when I say I'm conducting what the way people are thinking, and you can certainly hear it. That's what's nice is when you, when you're performing and you say, "All right, we're gonna do," you know, say we're gonna do this one, mm -hmm. and then you change to this one the sound changes because the way the people are thinking changes, you know, even if you're doing the same content or the same structure. Well, you, I don't, I don't tell people the content. Okay. I just, I say, you know, just, this means you're not listening because you're doing something really difficult. That's the, the structure or the, if you like the frame, the only framework, mm -hmm. but it, I think another thing about improvising, and definitely Lowell Coxill was a, a great at this. We say, you have a big responsibility. Do you know what I mean? Okay. And it's as an, in, as an individual, you can't say, oh, well, the conductor tells me to do something and I, I do it because then you're not improvising. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You, and so, this is very interesting. Let me just, uh, do, uh, bracket here <laughs> which is um uh, it's great because even within the what i'm calling of conducted improvisation you have different approaches uh you have some yeah. conductors that they think uh they think the practice as a, a live composing so they are composing and then people mm. just react to what they are they are providing the structure and the content and other people more uh, goes more like in your perspective, creating a, an idea of shared responsibility. And uh, mm. this, this is something that, you know, I love it. I love the idea of shared responsibility where, where the conductor and the players are on the same level and they are on the same, uh, they work for what's better for everyone. 
And that's why I mm. was talking about social practice back there. Yes, because, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Please go on. Sorry for inter interrupting you. No, I interrupted you. Carry on. No, it's, it's social practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that it's great to, to have this idea of shared responsibility that you were talking about. And I, uh, you were talking about responsibility. And I just wanted mm. to edit up this, this idea. Yes, I mean, I feel as though, again, and I go back to what Evan said, that the, 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 the raison d'etre of the LIO is to improvise. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we are. We're improvisers, and there's a lot of us. So the conducting is just a tool to make that better, mm -hmm. you know? And also, every time we play, we do a couple of free pieces. So we may have like maybe four or five conducted pieces, but we always have a couple of free pieces as well. And it's those, my feeling is that we measure um, how, how well the conducted pieces are working by how well the free pieces work in that context, because we're all, the conducted pieces kind of help us to tune into each other and to ourselves, you know? And then when we play free, we have, you know, we have, we've got that, our, our, our senses are open and our, our minds are sort of focused in such a way that we, that it, it works well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. If I got some... It's, it's great that you were talking, sorry for, you know, diverge a bit, but it was great that you were talking about your mind. And then so suddenly you became an, a rainbow in the screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's this this light. I was I didn't uh, realize the sun was gonna come around. It's great. No. It's great. It's great. It just was like a, a piece <laughs> of magic happening there. <laughs> oh yes. Uh, nice. <laughs> well, I would like to comment something that uh, something that I perceived and caught my attention when I was in in London with uh, with the the LIO. And um, maybe you could you could spare some comments on that. And uh, something that really really caught my attention it was the the multiple conductors on the same night. And and because I I went there like two hours early, and each conductor presented one idea just before the concert, mm -hmm. and then they they would work with that idea. And this is just I mean. I imagine that people does that for so long they are used to with the, the mainly gestures and then uh, people who want want to come can just present one idea and then work with the the whole vocabulary that you already have but also with one new idea and then but also uh, uh, sorry for being uh, being long here but uh, no for real also presenting this one idea just kept the the proposition so simple that mm. they they were great they were all of them were great because they were simple they were just one idea mm. and let's work mm. on that and i i think this is a great opportunity that you have and you have built that through the years and uh, but it's a great opportunity to do things slowly calmly but also with great intention and you know great attention as well and mm. uh, well uh, it, it just caught my attention that because it was so multiple with many conductors many ideas but also at the same time so simple and so easy it was great that i wonder if you can uh, comment some some of that Maybe that comes from the fact that the LIO came out of the Butch Morris skyscraper, the London skyscraper. Mm -hmm. So um, I wasn't in that group, but the basic first early LIO was based on that group because, and the, so the Butch Morris skyscraper, Butch Morris did conducted improvisation mm -hmm. and they did a tour of the UK. So I don't know, maybe 10 gigs, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And um I think this was in 1997, as I recall. That's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so 
he had asked all these players like Phil Vax Vaxman and Evan and John Butcher and, you know, Steve, obviously, who are extraordinary improvisers, just unbelievable, you know, the, really a generation of, of gifted improvisers. And then Butch Morris was in charge every night for two sets mm -hmm. saying, right, you play a long note and you, you play a solo and, and you play, you know, with very specific musical instructions. Mm -hmm. And although I think from what people say, they enjoyed the tour at the same time as, as people who've been improvising for, for years, decades, in some cases, it felt that there was something missing there, which was the, the input, mm -hmm. you know, but more input from the performers. And so when they set up the LIO, you know, they wanted to not make it too restrictive, basically, mm -hmm. and to say, basically, almost anything goes, you know, and we'll have different conductors and try different things. The main, the, the one thing was that we'll always have some free improvisations in our performances. And then there's a cue. I don't know if it's on the list that you have there, but one of the first instructions is you don't have to follow the instructions. Okay. You know, it's because you're, again, you're responsible ultimately. It's like the John, so, John Zorn's Cobra hat. Like you put the hat and then you, 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 you don't really have to follow the Well, rules. it isn't because you don't have to say, you don't okay. have to um, you have a cue for that. You don't have to say it. It's, uh, it's just your own personal, like, I know you, you know that um, my partner is John Edwards, right? Mm -hmm. So when he was playing with the orchestra, really often people would say, you play, and he would just not play because he felt like it's beautiful as it is. It doesn't need the bass, you know? Mm -hmm. And or else sometimes people will play. It's just the the most important thing isn't the conducting; it's the improvising. Yeah, and I think that that's great. That's great. Thank you so much for saying that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and although although Butch Morris also I I have I have an interview of him saying that um, he his wishes. Uh, what what he really wished was to not have to say any gesture, to give any gesture, and then the music happens for itself. And yes. you know, although he was uh, a, a conductor who stayed conducting with, you know, who be the the one who was conducting only, uh, mm. I think I think he let uh, he leave he left some great ideas on what what is how, how this can you know build up and evolve and you know become something even better and that's definitely what you are saying yeah. that's right yeah it, and i think without butch maybe the lio wouldn't exist so it's you know it was hugely inspiring for for everyone that 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 tour happened yeah. and it that's that was like the foundation on which we we've been building ever since you know and and of course the building get, it looks different but it's still that's still the foundation you know that's great yeah and uh well i have one last question that i want to share uh, i want to ask you uh that i've prepared i mean but okay. um i know you were you were talking in in uh, you were talking about a a, a conduction a conduction style of very very uh very open form, very, uh, I, I don't know how to, to put this in English, sorry for that. Uh, no um, but I know that you are being very f uh, free as, as a conductor as well. But I wonder, let, 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 let me see if this question makes any sense. I wonder if as a conductor, have you ever felt frustrated on stage? Have oh God! Ever, yeah, you know, <laughs> have you ever faced some challenge that you you couldn't really deal with that, and how did you get out of this? Um, I've I yeah, one feels frustrated almost every time because I okay. think that's the thing. Also, as an improviser, you know, you're improvising, so it's happening in real time, and it's not about telling people what to do, is it? So I'm not frustrated because 
people aren't doing what I've told them to do or whatever. It's about the improvisation. You know, something's something's holding it back or or you know, this sometimes you know, there have been like maybe a, a few individuals who feel like, oh, I don't want to do that. But then that's also part of, mm -hmm. you know, part of the LIO. It's just, um, and in a way, sometimes the most frustrating experiences are also the most interesting ones in that you, it makes you think, you know, you have a lot to, yeah. to, um, for your brain to feed on or your ideas to feed on. So I think it's it's part of the improvising process is that it's not I don't think we're even aiming to make something beautiful. Okay. That's that's a mm -hmm. very interesting thought. Can you can you say a, a bit more about that? You don't aim to I mean about um, don't aim well, to do something beautiful. Because it's like it, <sighs> What could I say you were aiming for? You're aiming maybe to be true to the moment. You're aiming definitely, and this this comes from Maggie to, and from John Stevens and just the way I feel about it. When there's, even if there's 50 people, you know, the, the 50th person is as important as the first person. And so that's, you know, I know that some people don't feel that way. Yeah. They feel that there's, a, you know, there's a more of a hierarchy amongst the performers. But I, I think if you've got 50 people performing, then they're, then they're all equally important. So, you know, definitely an improvisation where maybe five of those people are doing everything and filling up the space so much that the other 45 aren't getting a chance to be heard. I think that would be a relatively a failure as an improvisation okay both for the both for the five people who are doing everything because they failed their imagination has failed them in realizing oh there's also 45 other people present mm -hmm. do you know yeah so it but also so that was the, you know the thing about listening is really important but i also feel as though when you play you have to make yourself matter in the music. So it's not about playing the whole time, but sort of in a sort of reticent way. It's, you might just play once, but that one thing you do is just the sort of the pivot of the whole piece, you know? And that is incredibly valid. That's, that's like, you know, that's amazing to do that. Yeah. That's great. Oh. Yes, outstanding. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks so much Thank for you. sharing this. Yeah, it's uh, it's been great to talk with you because you have so uh, so so nice ideas and a different point of view from everyone else. Not not everyone else, but I mean uh, slightly different. And you know, I love the difference. I love this kind of. Uh, uh, the, the way people put things in a different way it's it's great great thank you guillaume thank you so much for asking me yeah no thank you for participating on that and uh, <laughs> you also you also said that it's it was uh uh it was a bit difficult to be a woman as a as a you know an improviser and being in this and uh i also found yeah. difficult to find a woman uh who were conductors to interview and um, I th yeah, I, th I think, I mean, um, it's great to have, uh, uh, uh you here representing as well. And it was, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you are great. <laughs> uh, well, I have, we have five more minutes here, uh, and, um, I wonder if you have any less, uh, less considerations, any stories that you want to share or something that you want to say about your experience, a anything? Um, Maybe some tips? Well, I think the, the point, well, the, what would be the tips? I don't know. Uh, 
even well i think the main thing is even if you're afraid you have to keep going as an improviser you don't stop just yeah. carry on yeah. that's that's so important you know you you're not which i would say to myself if i ran into my 25 year old self i'd say that mm -hmm. and i did carry on but you know it was like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But also, I think that it's important to have people conducting who come from different and diff and performing who who are different from you know the sort of dominant uh, class or the dominant gender or whatever that is because I think you do get different ideas if your life experience has been looking at things from underneath perhaps or looking at things from another side, obviously your creative contribution is going to be looking at things differently. And I find that, you know, the art that that produces, whether whatever kind of art it is, 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 is so fascinating. You know, it's all of it's fascinating, but it's, it's another angle on things. Thank you. To totally. <laughs> it, it is fascinating indeed. Yes. Thank you. Well, um, uh... I just, I can't thank you enough for being here. And I just wanted to uh, say again that I'm very grateful for you to participating on this. And um, I wish I, if I can ask you a favor or something that I would love to put my hands on, on the newest version of this, this file. Okay. If you can share with me, I would love. I would think love Adrian to has, I'll, I'll get, I'll get it from, um, Adrian or Steve, they might have a, a, the most recent one. Okay. <laughs> it's a very fluid document, though. There isn't a definitive yeah. version, I'm afraid. I mean, I mean, what, <laughs> like what, the LIO. I mean, yes, whatever. I would love to, to catch up with whatever okay. you have uh, written. And when you come to London again, I, I hope I hope that will happen and we'll see you again. It, it will happen. Not sure when, but it will definitely happen. And I'm... I'm uh, I will be very pleased to be with you and all those people again. Yeah, give my love to Brazil. Okay, the same thing. <laughs> my love to you and uh, your uh, your mates there, everyone who's there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much again, and hope to catch up soon. <laughs>